Well, let's start with <clears throat> let's start with the week's good news. Um, as many people probably know, I did a program with Jamie Glazov, which was an absolute de delight. Real lovely guy and nosy stuff. I would urge everybody who supports me, everybody who knows me, everybody who follows me, to please do go over and subscribe to his channel. It's well worth a look and, and you know, you might actually learn quite a lot from him. Um, he comes with quite a history of his own actually. He's a very impressive person. Um, and it was it was nice to be able to get somebody to listen and to give them an idea of what women and girls are suffering in this country every day. Which brings me to my next topic. Now, that video is really warm, is it just me? Maybe it's menopause, I don't know. Anyway, diverting. A guy commented on the video. The usual rhetoric came out. This is nothing to do with this lump. I'm thinking of having that put up on a big balloon and skyrocketed all over the, the world for everyone else in every Islamic country to see that this is nothing to do with Islam because, of course, they're going to listen because they're obviously they're reading, you're all reading the same book, so they must know that this has nothing to do with Islam. So maybe that's the way we get the message across to the likes of ISIS. Now, ISIS has turned around and said, and I don't know if anybody's seen this, if they haven't seen it, it's on my, it's on my Facebook, it's also on my, on my Twitter, go and find it. It says, ISIS enshrines the theology of rape. Qadir Iraq, in the moments before he raped the 12 year old girl, 12 years old. The Islamic State fighter took the time to explain that what he was doing was not a sin because the preteen girl practiced a religion other than Islam. The Quran not only gave him the right to rape her, but condoned it and encouraged it, he insisted. He bound her hand and gagged her. Then he knelt, knelt beside the bed and prostrated himself in prayer before getting on top of her. When it was over, he knelt to pray again bookending the rape with acts of religious devotion. I kept telling him, it hurts, please stop, said the girl, whose body is so small an adult could circle her waist with two hands. He told me that according to Islam, he's allowed to rape an unbeliever. He said that by raping me, he is drawing closer to God. Now, Again, we will be told, this has nothing to do with Islam. Even though, as he laid his dirty, filthy, raping, piece of crap, garbage body on top of her, and proceeded to rape a child that was tiny in frame, he could still sanction it with words direct from the Quran. Now I am aware, as I told this guy who came onto my onto the Jamie Glazov YouTube video, if you go and have a look, you'll see the comments. Um, who turned around and said, this, "This is nothing to do with Islam. You're nothing more than fit scaremongering and full of propaganda." I'm full of propaganda. No, I think you'll find that you are full of ignorance and stupidity. If you cannot see that, like it or not, these men are taking your scripture and acting it out in its literal form. Even good Muslims that I have spoken to have said, yes, 1400 years ago, of course it happened. Can we sit here and say that 1400 years ago that our life came untarnished, completely untarnished, and that it doesn't come with blood stains? on its hands, of course we can't. There isn't a country in the world that doesn't have blood on its hands in one shape or form or another. The difference is, we modernise and we move with the times and you barbaric savages think that it is alright to rape a child and the reason you do it is because you are dirty, 
filthy, nonsense, raping, scumbag paedophiles. Now, as he pointed out, paedophilia in our own country, in our own community, absolutely there is. Westminster, prime example. We all know what's going on there. Look at Jana. I mean, they've had to, how long has this gone on to get him into court? We know it happens in our community. Nobody ever said it didn't. But that's the difference. We do not sit and say there are no white rapists. We do not say there are no black rapists. We do not say there are no brown rapists. We accept that there are rapists in every creed, in every colour. But you have to ask yourself the difference being, and I'll tell you the difference. The man who rapes because he's a rapist and doesn't use a book to justify it. There's your difference. There is your difference. And if you are too dumb stupid to see that it is being done in the name of Allah, then that is not my problem. It is, sir, your problem. Because it is your community that is failing to stand up and call out these paedophiles and call out these rapists and expose those children that have already been radicalised or those men preparing to go out and fight in Syria and rape innocent children. Just as innocent children are being raped here in this country, something else he tried to argue with me about and wanted statistics and facts. So I sent him the links with the statistics and facts. Funnily enough, he straight away come back and called me full of propaganda. Didn't like the fact that I gave you the links that gave you the direct facts then. So I gave you what you wanted, I gave you what you required and still it wasn't enough. That makes you an apologist. It makes you, in my eyes, a sympathiser. Because if you weren't, you'd be calling them out on it. And you don't. Do not tell me that you do not know that within your community there are rapists or there are people who support ISIS. You know they do. Just as a woman down the road from me goes out and commits a crime, comes into the local paper, or before it even gets into the local paper, or before she's even been caught for it, everybody's whispering about it so people know about it. Your community knew about this. You knew about these girls being raped. You kept silent and you did nothing. Now that is not my fault. And it's not the fault of each and every single individual Muslim. But it is the fault of the communities that kept quiet when they knew it was happening. The things that have been done to this girl, and this is what Jamie and I want to do, because we've realised, and, I, and, and as I said to Jamie, it's not enough to just say the word rape anymore. Rape is not enough. It just isn't. It's not enough. The word means nothing. You see it on the news now, don't you? You listen. A woman today was raped in Seven Oaks. A woman today in Barnet was raped. Means nothing. Monotone. Go back 1940s, 1950s. Woman brutally raped. Violently raped. Child brutally sexually abused. Don't see that anymore. The word has become tame. Doesn't hit the same way as it used to hit. So, there's only one way we can do it. You're all going to have to hear exactly what was done to these girls. And if that means that I have to sit there and go into every last sordid detail of what was done to me, then so be it. I will put my money where my mouth is. The same as I will call out the fact that those Pakistani men who beat me to push me into prostitution, which they never succeeded, but Believe you me, on the occasions when they got hold of me and they beat me and they kicked me and they punched me and they dragged me by my hair and they spat on me. Oh, trust me, if they could have got me to a room on my own, the chances are they would have raped me too. And then I would have been forced out for every man to do with as he saw fit, just as they did with the young girl who lived on the street with me. That isn't propaganda, as he was liking to call it. It's a statement of fact. 
I know, because it was me, it was done too. Do I believe they attacked me because I was white and they felt that I was easy meat? Yes, I do. Because when they call you white trash, it's because that's what they think you are. So that cult of ISIS, who are cowards, they are cowards. They think they can go out there and, and get hold of innocent people and cut their heads off. It makes them heroes. You're not heroes. You're zeros. You're nothings. The reason you do this is because you are nothing. That's why you do it, to be something. Well, you are something. You are just a thing. A nothing. And what did you do, Cameron? You let them back in to the country. You have no idea how many children they have raped, how many women they have raped. You have no idea how many people they have beaten because they didn't want to be Islamic and refused to convert. Which brings me to my very nicely on to the next topic. A guy from Pakistan contacted me. Now, I've been talking to him at length. He's a nice guy, really nice guy. He's got a real kindness about him. And he was a full practicing Muslim for many, many years. Many years. From birth. And I'm not going to say what his name is because he now lives in the back of a factory. Because his family beat him and they starved him, and they beat him some more. And I shared a link, uh, it was a video that was put out, and it was from Pakistan, and it was a man who, who'd got, uh, they'd, they'd got some big giant paddle thing that looked like it was made of hard rubber, and they were beating this man, holding him down and beating him with it. And I thought, I don't understand what they're saying, so if he was a rapist, would I feel bad? No, not really doesn't mean I, I still don't feel appalled that, that men have the capability to do that sort of thing to a human being, but as he raped a child, fine. So I, I, I asked this, this guy, can you tell me what they're saying? And all it was is because the guy was being accused of a crime, of blasphemy. And I said to him, did this ever happen to you? And he went, oh yeah, and worse. Far worse. Now, let me just see if I can find it. Just bear with me one second. I'd like to see if I can find this. And I will tell you the words. His words. They're not mine. Because it, it sent a bit of a cold shiver down my spine to think that, that somebody could do this to another human being just because they don't like the fact that he left his farm. I just that astonished me. Absolutely astonished me. Um, just bear with me because I've got to try and find it. Because at the moment my um, my Facebook's been going absolutely berserk, really berserk. Um, sorry, I'm sitting here in silence, and I never do that because I'm never lost for words, but. I do want to find this. Let me go on to my page. It might be the easiest way to do it. Unless, of course, unless, of course, somebody's taking it down, which also wouldn't shock me. They're very good at doing that as well lately. You know, everything you put up, my mum puts on. There we go. This is what I asked the guy, because I, I really wanted to know um, whether, you know, this was done to him. And I said to him, he said, it's normal way of Pakistani police they arrest innocent and torture him to accept the crime he didn't commit. I said, is this what was done to you, John? He said, they were punching in my belly and prostate, kicking up my lower back. They punched their elbow in my spinal cord, which stopped my breathing. They sometimes kicked at my outer thighs, which gave me a terrible pain. Sometimes two policemen used to hold my hand one policeman holding my arm, and they used to pull them with a great jerk, 
which used to bring a darkness in my sight. That was horrible. My co-workers accused me of blasphemy out of jealousy. He said, Independence Day in Pakistan tomorrow and Muslims are rejoicing. I can hear them playing firecrackers, laughing with joy and greeting each other. But there are some apostates like me who are counting their days in hideouts. We can't rejoice, we can't laugh with people, can't dine out with fear, without fear. We just look at them, this is all we do. Apostates, apostates like me know the real value of independence and deep breath of fresh air. Now that really upset me earlier, it really upset me. This guy's been helping a Christian lady who she stopped Muslim men from raping her younger sibling. So what they did is they threw acid in her face, which melted the skin of her face over her eyes. Now John was really excited when I spoke to him, that's what I'll call him, I'll call him John. Because he managed to get her into a hospital and they were going to do treatment. I think he said, um, I think he said something like 16 years of, of surgery she was going to need. And no guarantee that behind the skin she had any sign. She got into the hospital, they threw her out. A few couple of days, maybe two days later, they threw her out of the hospital because she was a filthy Christian, according to them. And they've refused to operate on her. But hey, Islam's a religion of peace. I keep hearing everybody tell me. It's a religion of peace. So why is it in every single country where Islam exists, there is violence and rape and acid burns and people beaten in the name of a religion of peace? Until Islam behaves in a peaceful manner, you cannot call it a religion of peace. It's impossible. That's like saying Christianity is a religion of, of, of violence. Well, there's no violence in this country by Christians. So you couldn't say that. Well, we can't equally say that Islam is a religion of peace when it's going around and it's beating people. I'm going to try and create a GoFundMe page for the guy, and get somebody to, to sort that out for me. Um, I'm not going to go into his story now, I'm going to let him type it up so that you can read it for yourselves and you'll understand why I'm doing it. Like I said, I don't ask for money for Maria, but I will ask for money for men like him. A man that's prepared to take a risk every day of having to go, when he, go, when he wants to go to church, has to change the colour of his helmet and the colour of his motorbike in order to go to church because they want him dead. No compulsion though. Unless of course you want to leave. There's your compulsion. Death sentence for leaving. There's your compulsion. You all know that there's another Muslim guy, ex-Muslim, made a video made a, a, a sound piece for me when I went to Downing Street. Lives in England and cannot show his face because they will kill him. So he sounded too peaceful because he's not sounding too peaceful to me. This is another reason why Maria's exists. We're not here to just help people of our skin colour and my faith or lack of because I'm an atheist. I will help anybody who is deserving of that help. Be they Muslim, Sikh, Hindu, I don't care. If they are good people, I will help them. But do not come to me and tell me that you're a good person and because you practice your faith in a very personal manner and you cause nobody any harm, that it's not the fact that other people are not doing that. That they are taking it in its literal form and they are acting it out in its literal 7th, 7th, 7th century ideological totalitarianism. Because we both know that that is what's happening. So that's another thing. And the guy on, on, on the YouTube that's, that's whining at me, you know, racist, racist, racist. Do you know what? Seriously, 
call me racist all you like. I will take being a racist over an apologist or a leftist or a so-called feminist. These are another lot. Oh, they, well, no, see, now I've gone on tangent now. Do not ever claim to be a feminist when you belong to organisations that I have been in touch with that will not stand up for the rights of women beaten because of Sharia law because you fear being called an Islamophobe or a racist because you are not a feminist. You are a feminazi. You hate men and you will do whatever it takes to hate on men. You don't want to do anything for fear of reprisals against you. You're not a feminist. You are an embarrassment to every female in this country. You are an embarrassment to the suffragettes that fought for this country. That died and gave their lives so the likes of you in years to come could deny the same rights to every other woman in this country. You are not feminists. You are weak and pathetic and you are an embarrassment to the female form. Whereas I, I'd say, yeah, I'm a feminist. I embrace the differences between men and women. I think it's great that we're different. Difference is good. That's how you get your unity. You look at each other in equal measures, recognising the differences between you. That is not a bad thing. So on to the next subject. I would just like to say that the French... have again shown cowardice, something that they were very good at during the war. I mean, you had the French resistance, which we know did a great deal, and massive respect to them. But they were cowards. I remember my grandfather talking about him. They, they would run, not fight, run. Now we have the mayor of Calais threatens to open the border unless Cameron sits down for talks to solve migrant crisis. First of all, illegal immigrants, which you permitted to get to your shores to enable them to get to ours. You deal with your mess in your own backyard. I say, get our boys, our forces, get them out there, send them out and push the illegal immigrants back by force if necessary, get a fence up with razor wire Oh yeah, I'd go that far. Because you check out these immigrants, these illegal immigrants that are clambering into the trucks and backs of lorries that are being fined thousands of pounds when they've got no control over it. Now, apart from the odd one that the BBC zoom in on, just to make sure you can see that this is poor woman, please help me, and she probably really does need that help. And somebody like John in, in Pakistan... Oh, I'd help him. Oh, yeah, you're damn right. If I, if I could get his visa and his travel, and I could get him here to safety, you're damn right, I would do that. But these men coming in are boys of fighting age. And by the own admission of the government, they have no idea how many jihadists will be coming in with them. And let's face it, Cameron, you've already let almost a thousand back in. And if you tell us it's 500, we know we need to double it, possibly even triple it. And what did they get? What did you give them? Nothing. They're walking our streets. What do you think they're doing? What do you think they're walking around saying, let's buy that nice little kefir girl a lot, nice Ollie? No, they're not. They're plotting and they're planning. And there will be an attack in this country, Cameron. And you, you amoeba, you spineless, gutless man, will be to blame for it. Because you are a coward. Morally, you are a coward. Financially, you're greedy. You are greedy. And yet, you let that woman for that charity. Well, how much, what, somebody quote me on the amount, because I can't remember, was it 350000 or something like that? And then suddenly she goes bankrupt. You muppet. You wasted. Explain that to the taxpayer who pays their taxes for you to waste their money. You are a disgrace to this country. You are a disgrace for everything that Winston Churchill stood for. 
You are a disgrace for everything that the suffragettes fought for. You are a disgrace for every man who lost his life in battle, fighting in wars for this country's democracy, this country's rights and freedoms. You are a disgrace to every single one of them. And I am so glad I did not vote you, because that is not a shame I would want to take to my grave. So, anybody who wants those links, go on my Twitter, check them out. They're on there. They're on my Facebook. They're on the Maria's page. They're on every page I've got. Because trust me now, at the moment, I don't sleep very much. I'm lucky I'm surviving on two or three hours a night, as you can see. I don't. Although, I do blame Jamie Glasgow for looking particularly rough tonight, because I sat up. Because our hours are so different. Um... It means I had to be awake at half five sort of time in the morning. Well, I know that with the health problems I've got, if I go to bed, I'm lucky if I get to sleep between three and four. Often I'm taking phone calls from people, so I can't, or I, I don't just hang up on somebody. If they need to talk, I listen. Um, so I often don't get a lot of sleep anyway. And I thought, well, if I don't go to sleep till three, there's pretty much a chance I'm just not going to get up. So I don't. So when I do shows with Jamie, I hope everybody understands that I don't sleep. I do stay up all night and I wait patiently. And he's, he's very kind to give me as much time as he's, he's given me. So I'm asking, there, I think I've got something like 4,500 followers. I don't know, 4,000 followers, 3,000. I, I I've got a few on Twitter. Subscribe to Jamie Glasgow, the Glasgow guy. It, it's worth it. Honestly, go watch some of his videos. He's very, very good. And it's also a little way of me saying thank you, a personal thank you to him for giving me the time. You know, not everybody wants to give the time to people, and he does give me the time, and he does email me, and I do torment him a little bit because he uses the word awesome a lot. And, and I do tease him, but only because I do it in a nice way. So please, everybody, do go and subscribe to him. You know, give him your time. Everybody go and check those links out. Get them shared far and wide. Because let me tell you now, Cameron, you will only push this public so far before this public will push right back. But we are now doing it in the right way. We will take the tools available to us and utilise them in the best way possible to take what the tactics you use against us and use them against the likes of you. The British public are doing something I'm sure you wish they weren't. They're educating themselves. And that will be the biggest downfall for all of you. Because we're getting wiser and smarter. So on that note, everybody had a great night. I'm sorry it's been so long since I've done a video. I just have been so busy. But thanks everybody for your support. And I'll speak to you all again real soon. Take care and sleep well.